Not very often. We are underway. Robinson at 91 on that first delivery off the plate. His 34th career appearance for Tim Tadlock. Ninth career start, four and two. His career record. Thomas earlier this week against Texas A&M, one for four, had a single. He struck out and walked. On the Big 12's all-freshman team a year ago. Off speed for a strike, two and two to the Longhorns leadoff batter. Fastball breaking ball change for Robinson. There you just saw the good change up. Rolls that one out towards Robinson near the mound. To Cash and there is one away. Here's third baseman Peyton Powell, a 440 hitter on the year. Four home runs. He's driven in 19. Senior out of Robinson. And that pitch from Kyle Robinson is fouled out of play on the left side. Longhorns under David Pierce, Big 12 champs in 2018, 2021, 23. That ball on the ground into right field. And Peyton Powell on for the Longhorns with the first hit of the night. Powell jumping on a fastball and smoking it through the right side there for the base hit. Good looking swing. Now Jalen Flores. Jalen Flores. Flores got his season off to a great start. A couple of home runs against St. John's on February 27th. One of them a grand slam. And a grand slam on opening day against San Diego. Out of play on the right side. Jalen Flores, their everyday shortstop, no errors on the year, giving indication of what a good defender he is. Powell at first base, one for two on stolen base attempts this season. Not a big lead at all. That ball is skied into left field. Damian Bravo coming on. And Pompey going out and cannot make the catch. Drop the ball. Throw to second is not in time. Gus, it looked like Bravo never saw the ball, but it was a long, long run for him. You're exactly right. Bravo did not see it the, the instant it was hit. And we're at that point in the twilight where the sky is sort of pale. Pompey had to run a long way to get there. And I think Peyton Powell did a really nice job of seeing the difficulty out there and cheating his way down to second just a bit. And he beats that throw by just a bit and it goes as a single. Yeah, Harrelson was coming in on the play, but Pompey, the Red Raiders shortstop, closest to that. And could not make the play. Now Porter Brown. Brown, a guy that has struggled for the Longhorns here in the early part of the season. Does have three home runs and seven driven in, but a batting average below 200. Yeah, that number's not going to stay below 200 like that. The Red Raiders would like to see him heat up right after he leaves town. Boy, he is dangerous. <laughs> Ground ball past McGee at third into left field. This will score a run. Bravo comes up with the ball. It'll be, well, it tried to cut it off at third base. It got away. Now a runner to third and throw down in time. And they will get Flores at third. But he wants to appeal the play. Peyton Powell scored on the single into left field. Flores trying to go first to third. Red Raiders missed the cutoff throw back inside. But it was Robinson who made the play back at third base. And Flores, at least for the time being, called out. 
That is a big ground ball chopped through the left side. The throw short hops McGee and gets away. Robinson doing what he's supposed to do. Comes up throwing right here. Coach Rodriguez there at third base saying, hey, he missed the tag. And uh, immediately giving the safe sign and calling for the headphones. Umpires tonight are Chris Kosky behind home plate, Casey Mosier at first, Blake Felix at second, and Charles Bussey at third. But three straight singles by Longhorn hitters against Robinson here in the first. So Porter Brown will be at first. The question whether or not Jalen Flores is safe or out at third base. It was Pompey putting the tag on him there. Yeah, Pompey doing a good job of rotating over as McGee takes that cutoff. He too right where he was supposed to be. Temperature in the low 40s here tonight. Brown was the guy that really worked the Red Raiders over last year in this series in Austin. And that single has scored a run. He was five for eight, had a couple of doubles and a home run. There's a single there. There is David Pierce in his eighth season there in Austin. 268 wins. Here is the call and the play at third overturn. Jalen Flores is safe at third base. And there'll be a throwing error assigned on that. I would assume E7 will get that scoring now. This error goes up on the board. Runners on the corners here with one out. They have put the error on uh, with the wrong team, but that'll be adjusted. The error that got past the Red Raider cutoff man that Kyle Robinson back in the on deck circle area fielded the ball, threw it back to third, but not in time to get Flores. Now Ryan Galvan runner goes as he squares to bunt. The Red Raiders will not make a throw. And Porter Brown is at second. The Longhorns have a run in now two more in scoring position in the top of the first. And Red Raider fans will note that Kevin Bazell, the normal starting catcher for the Red Raiders unavailable this weekend and Coach Tadlock had talked about that through the through the week's media. He's dealing with an illness. Red Raiders hoping to have him back soon. Now Robinson falling behind Galvan at two and one. Galvan DHing tonight for the Longhorns, playing with a sore thumb that keeps him from being behind the plate, but in the batting order. It's swing and a miss there. Lopez and Pompey up the middle, staying back. They'll trade the run for an out. The ground ball there, cash. And McGee just a step behind the baseline. Something hit firm, but those guys could be played to the plate. Now three and two. Jared Thomas grounded out to Robinson to start, but after that, three straight singles. 93 from Kyle Robinson and fouled back. Red Raider outfield shading Galvan around to right field. A lot of room down the left field line into that corner. Galvan did not play in the Longhorns game against Texas A&M earlier this week. Change of speeds and he struck him out. Robinson very confident in that changeup, not afraid to use it. He got Thomas on the little tap back to the mound to start this inning with that pitch, and there finishes off Galvan with a 3 2 change. Oh, 
Here's Max Ballou, first pitch swinging, skies it into right field. Washburn having trouble finding the ball, and he's not going to be able to make a play. It's out of here for a Longhorn home run. A three-run blast by Ballou, and again, Red Raider outfielders just having trouble picking up the ball. He was not going to be able to make a play on it, as it turns out, though, Gus. But the home run into the Red Raider bullpen, it's 4-0 Texas. Yeah, this is that point in the evening. Kind of twilight. The lights obviously on and in effect, but you still got a little bit of a pale sky, certainly back here behind us and off to the west. It's the second time that these outfielders have struggled with it. They're ready for this guy to get dark. Are they ever? 4 nothing Texas, three singles and a home run, and now Schusler fly ball right at Owen Washburn in right field. He will make the play. But the Longhorns with four. Damian Bravo, who has hit in every game this season. The Red Raiders are going to need some of that after that first inning for Texas. But the Red Raiders do come in as the top hitting team in the Big 12 at 364. That is third best in the country. And Texas got showing the shift against Cash, and there is a very much an urge to bunt on the third base side. There's no one there. Yeah, Cash certainly willing to roll one down there to third base and take that leadoff single. The Red Raiders hunting base runners very early on here. Shift is on. Three infielders on the first base to second base side. Third baseman is where a shortstop would normally play. Cash going the other direction. Porter Brown's got a long run, but a lot of room to play it. And Gavin Cash has flied out to left field. Fastball slider split finger for Johnson. David Pierce, very complimentary of his starting pitcher, LeBaron Johnson. A guy who has been good for the Longhorns for quite some time. Even Tim Tadlock in that Red Raider dugout says he is as good as there is. And now Austin Green trying to find a way to get on base. Named the preseason pitcher of the year in the Big 12. Ground ball right into that shift for Green. He's quick down the base path, but O'Dowd's throw in time, and there are two away here in the bottom of the first. Yeah, O'Dowd playing a couple of steps out in the shallow right field as they had Green shifted, and there was the good splitter. Green rolls over it. The little ground ball out there to second. Now Cade McGee with two out and nobody on. The Red Raider third baseman, 333 on the year. He's got one home run, eight driven in. Johnson, the Longhorns opening day starter, has also thrown against Cal Poly and LSU. Another heavy pull side shift for the Longhorn infield is O'Dowd, their second baseman, way around the shortstop. Shortstop out in shallow left field, Flores. A lot of room on that right side. Only so much room Jared Thomas can cover. Two and one to the Red Raiders third baseman, the transfer from Gonzaga. Freshman All-American, West Coast Conference Freshman of the Year. Back in 2022. Junior out of Tucson waiting on a 3-1 and one pitch.
Three and two pitches off the plate, ball four. Gus, it didn't miss by much. No, everything downhill from LeBaron Johnson. And that pitch just down and out of the zone. If you're going to miss, it's not a bad place to miss. Especially on a night with the wind blowing the way it is. Both these coaches not so much concerned about the cold weather, but about the wind where routine fly balls might find a way to keep on going. Although it is supposed to die down some over the course of this ball game. Yeah, Although the, the temperature is not going to warm up, <laughs> no, that's for sure. Not. We're going to play this game around 40 degrees, but you know the wind's already started to lay down a little bit. Just a little bit of a ruffle on those flags and blowing across from left to right. Wind out of the north, which explains the temperature. Oh, and Washburn here for the Red Raiders with two out and a runner on. He's got 27 multi-hit games in his career. Six of them have occurred this year. There you see 40 degrees tonight as we get started. Good spot for that fastball in under the hands. Of Washburn freezes him for the second strike strike in this sequence. Longhorns have put the shift on for all of the Red Raider hitters, three of them on that right side. And now two and two. Red Raiders are one of two teams in the Big 12 starting play this weekend that have not had a base dealer caught. Red Raiders are 15 of 15. Kansas was the only other team at seven stolen bases that had not had someone thrown out. <laughs> Kate McGee, who is at first, has not attempted a stolen base. Deep in the outfield and playing Washburn to pull. Washburn's got three home runs this season. Chased the pitch out of the strike zone there, but fouled it off. And that's the Raiders for the shooting foul ball. Johnson has given up three doubles this season. Those are the only extra base hits allowed. All of those came against LSU in his last time out. Way inside to Washburn. And now Johnson has gone to three and two on back to back batters. He walked McGee. Can Washburn get on for the nation's top hitter, Damian Bravo? You know, with the count full and two outs, McGee will be on the move. Thomas playing behind him over there first. There he goes. And Washburn fouled it off. He'll be on the move again. Washburn hits a towering fly ball into left center field. Brown, though, looked like he couldn't find it for a moment and now does. A couple of steps in to make the play. In the Eight, nine, and one for Texas here in the second. O'Dowd will lead off Gasparino after that, then back to the top of the order in Jared Thomas. O'Dowd, the senior out of Nashville, rips that ball into left field. Long run for Bravo, one hops off the wall. Extra bases for O'Dowd to lead off here in the top of the second. O'Dowd doing a good job of staying on an outside pitch and tattooing it down the left field line. One hop off the bullpen net. Easy leadoff double to get things started. 
Eight batters have come to the plate for Texas. Five of them have hits. Now the freshman, Will Gasparino. Going to lay down the bunt right towards Cash, who had come in from first. Lopez covering it second and unable to move up his O'Dowd. Yeah, Cash was crashing hard. And Gasparino didn't see it and bunted right into the coverage. Now back to the top of the order and Jared Thomas who grounded out back to Robinson to start this game. But then three straight singles and later in that first the home run by Ballou. Two from Kyle Robinson and a swing and a miss. Big 12 coaches in their preseason picks this year had TCU at number one, Texas number two in the league. Oklahoma State after that, then the Red Raiders at number four. So a couple of teams that league coaches see as contenders going at it. Opening weekend of Big 12 play. Two and two and to the Longhorns' first baseman. This is the first true road game for Texas this year. Thomas has fought off two straight changeups there, doing a nice job letting that ball travel. O'Dowd at second. He led off here in the inning with a double. Gasparino could not move him along. Now Thomas at three and two. Texas did sweep the Red Raiders in Austin last year. Thomas had a home run in that series. Came in game three in which Texas won 9-8. He was three for four in that game. Couple of runs scored, couple of runs driven in. Hits this one right at Lopez. Runner will go to third, but Lopez the play at first for out number two. Yeah, we got a pretty good indication of the level of athlete Jared Thomas is from Coach Pierce today when he talked about Thomas playing first base, but also being a guy that can play center field. That's a uh, Cody Bellinger compliment there. That's a pretty good athlete. Remarkably different positions. Yes. Now Peyton Powell, who singled into right field in his first at bat, would come around to score. Red Raider fans did not like the call there, which was not a strike. Off speed from Robinson, swing and a miss. Two and one with two outs here in the top of the second. That home run earlier by Ballou, the 23rd of the year for Texas. They lead the Big 12. 
with those 23 home runs. The Red Raiders are right behind them with 21. Robinson fooling Powell for strike two. Powell with 23 hits on the season now. That's second best in the Big 12. And got him on the strike three. Swing and a miss at another off-speed pitch from Kyle Robinson. Lead-off double in the top of the second from the Longhorns. Yeah, no doubt. He even talked about that, whether it comes in the form of, uh, you know, some a couple of midweek games. It would just be a good way to continue the rivalry. Probably good business for both schools. Maybe it takes place in a neutral site. Who knows? But I think both coaches probably willing to do so. Said he generally loves playing Texas, not so much last year, but, but he has swept the Longhorns in Austin. During his time, taking the Red Raiders to four College World Series appearances. Good on good here, and Damian Bravo draws the walk, Gus. Four pitches. Yeah, and this obviously a Cold night. Pitcher's gonna have to find a way to keep the field. Damian Bravo, the Big 12 and nation's leading hitter, walked in his first plate appearance. Now, Tracer Lopez. Longhorns will put the shift on for the Red Raiders' speedy second baseman. Looked as though he wanted to bunt, and Schuessler, a great save job there on that pitch down and in. Yeah, that pitch a pretty big location miss there. Powell staying at home at third base. He's playing a normal position, almost a normal bunt coverage type look here, and I don't know if Lopez is bunting. He's bunting for a base hit. Lopez limited plate appearances here in the early going, 27 times up. Has only four hits, but two of them are for extra bases. He's got a triple and a home run. Called strike there, but Lopez against Texas in that series last year in Austin had four hits. One of those a double. So they are familiar with the Red Raiders second baseman. Now LeBaron Johnson who's out of Jacksonville Florida on a chilly night in Lubbock is three and one to Lopez. That's low for ball four. He's walked the first two batters here in the bottom of the second inning. Yeah, John, I believe those were just fastball misses. That's what it looked like based on what we're seeing on the radar gun. He's fighting his command a little bit coming out from the dugout for his second inning of work here. Coach Pierce out to talk to him. Another look at that pitch to Lopez, and it's down there in the bottom of the zone. Red Raiders came into this ball game with 94 walks in their first 12 games, most in the Big 12. This Red Raider team leading the Big 12 in batting average, at bats, runs, hits, doubles, RBIs, total bases, slugging percentage, walks. They've even been hit by more pitches than any other team in the league, and they're on base percentage. If you are the Longhorns, you do not want free passes and putting guys on base. Yeah, Coach Pierce hung around at the end of that mound visit and let Chris Koski get out there to break it up and then had a few words for him. Here's Dylan Maxey with runners at first and second and nobody out. 375 on the year. Horns are thinking he's going to lay down a bunt and try and move up the runners. Charging from first, Thomas. He'll back up now. 
Maxi in the Red Raiders game at New Mexico earlier this week. A double and three runs driven in. Big cut there. Yeah, and it was a big one, John. That was a one-run ball game. A full count, two outs, bases loaded. They're in about the sixth, seventh inning, and he doubled to the base of the wall and left field, drove in all three and kind of broke that game open. High school All-American finds himself behind in the count at 0-2. Ground ball right back to Johnson. Fumbled the ball trying to throw to second and then threw it away at first. Red Raiders are going to get at least one run in. Bravo is crossed. Lopez will be held up. And Dylan Maxey is safe at first base. Johnson has to go up high to get this ball that looked like it might bounce over him. But he's 6'4", wanted to go to second, drop the ball, and then short arms to throw to first base. Yeah, and as high as that ball was chopped back to the mound, he probably would have been wise to just glove it and make his first look over there to first. And of course, he's like anybody else thinking, man, I want to get, I want to get a, get a force, keep that double play in order. Really got himself in trouble there. Now Gage Harrelson for the Red Raiders. Runners on the corner, nobody out. Bravo led off the inning with a walk, then Lopez a base on balls, and then a throwing error by Johnson on that ground ball right back to the mound. Gets the Red Raiders center fielder to the plate. Johnson way out of the strike zone there, 93. But Schusler having to stand up to get that one. It's got right by Schusler. Bounces past him out there to Johnson, who came off the map of the field that ball. And scoring from third is Lopez. Gus, that's something we've talked about. There's not a lot of room behind home plate, and that ball just ricochets right back past the Longhorns catcher. And LeBaron Johnson off the mound to field it, but he couldn't get the ball back in time. Red Raiders have two runs. Yeah, had Schussler been able to turn around and play that thing, he might have had an easy out at the plate. But that was nowhere close. And this is got a second ball bounced in here and another wild pitch. Yeah, got away from him. And Dylan Maxey on those wild pitches has gone from first to third. You know, there really wasn't a single moment in this inning that was disruptive, but eight. Balls in the first nine pitches, and then these wild pitches, and now all of a sudden this crowd's awake. LeBaron Johnson had one wild pitch this season, and now he's walked his third batter of the inning. Gage Harrelson to first, and TJ Pompey, the Red Raiders shortstop to bat. 392 on the year with a couple of home runs and 19 runs driven in. Second most on this team behind Damian Bravo. Runner goes on the first pitch. No throw to second. And Harrelson is swiped second base. And Harrelson now five for five on the season. The Red Raiders doing to the Longhorns what they did in the first inning. Getting a first and third situation and stealing a bag on the very first pitch. Pompey, a young guy at the plate, the freshman out of Coppell, takes the strike. Very deep in the outfield, shading him around to right. Infield stays back all the way around. Top of the order, and Gavin Cash is on deck, swinging a miss by Pompey. Coming in with 20 hits, seven of them for extra bases. One of a couple of Red Raiders who's got a double, a triple, and a home run this year. One and two pitch, ground ball down towards third. It's in fair territory. Pompey will be out at first, but the run scores as Dylan Maxey comes in from third on that ground ball. It's 4-3 Texas now. Powell does a nice job here. He knows Maxey's moving on contact, maybe. Maybe he has enough time to make a play there, but that ground ball took him to the baseline. He was going to have to throw it right through. 
right through Lopez. And now Gavin Cash, ground ball right into the shift. That's the shortstop making the play Flores. But the Red Raiders have Gage Harrelson at third base now. With two outs and Austin Green to bat. Longhorns will keep that shift on. Three runs have scored for the Red Raiders. And Austin Green trying to tie the ball game here. The infield stays shifted. They're playing Green around the pole. He's the only switch hitter on either team in this game. He'll bat left-handed against the right-hander LeBaron Johnson. Fastball misses at 94 on the stadium radar gun. That's at 95 for a strike. Johnson came into the bowl game with 20 strikeouts in 16 innings and only seven walks, but he's walked four here so far tonight. Now Austin Green, the senior out of Diana, who began his collegiate career at Weatherford College behind in the count at one and two. That's inside Green, the Red Raider DH tonight. Has played at second base and in the outfield this season as well. well that fastball straightens up Green. He's setting him up for that split finger. Two and two, ground ball right into that shift again. That's Flores to Thomas, and the inning is over. But the Red Raiders do get three runs on the Longhorn. ESPN Plus, they are going at it right now in Kansas City. Flores to lead off the inning for Texas. That's McGee, throws wide of the bag at first, but Gavin Cash kept his foot on the bag. Texas is going to appeal that one, too. Earlier appealing a throw and a tag out at the time at third base. That was overturned, and now McGee's throw to Gavin Cash. Gus, what do you think? Yeah, McGee, I think the extra, that second shuffle right there was where he lost his rhythm on the throw. Obviously, pulls Cash off the bag. The question is, does the toe stay on the bag? Texas using their two reviews very early, and it worked well for him in the first inning. Looked from that angle like Cash might have stayed on the bag long enough. You can't tell there as he's leaning forward and the foot coming off the bag. Flores popped up into left field, shallow left field in the first inning. Bravo never saw it. Harrelson couldn't get there. And a long run for Pompey off his glove ruled a single. And Flores would eventually come around to score on the three-run homer by Ballou. Texas got four runs in that first inning. The Red Raiders score three in the second. Still do not have a hit in the ball game, but they're down by one. Now the question whether or not Flores is safe or out at first base. I think McGee felt like he was in good shape there as he had the step in the dive and a really nice play, but he came up with it, unable to get it out of his bag. Looked like that throw got rushed. It's going to be a really close play. See there, there the ball is already in the glove of Gavin Cash when that foot comes off the bag, I think. Looked like it there because you could not see the ball. And you think it would already be in his glove, and it might indeed be an out, but we will find out. If the runner is safe there at first, it's the third error of the year on the Red Raider third baseman. Decision has been made and just waiting on the umpires to return to the field, and here we go. And the call is out at first base confirmed on the review and Flores leading off for the Longhorns 
here in the third is out, but David Pierce may still want to talk about it at home plate, Gus. Tonight is the 175th game between these two teams. See here you can tell Gus that the ball is disappeared into his glove and his foot still on the bag before he comes off. It's a pretty good job by Cash of maintaining as much balance as he can. A lesser play there is a guy just flailing off the bag and pulling off. But really a nice work there by Gavin Cash. David Pierce wanting to express his opinion about that call. Last season's Big 12 regular season champs. Now Porter Brown singled into left field, drove in a run in that first inning. Takes the cold strike from Kyle Robinson. With that hit, Brown upping his average over 200. He had come in at just 196. Finds himself in an 0-2 hole here. Robinson has struck out a couple of batters in the ball game, but he's given up five hits, including a three-run homer and a double. Ground ball right back to the Red Raider pitcher. There's out number two. Robinson pulling a string on Brown, getting a little tap back the mound, back to the mound off the end of the bat there. What a good change. That one elevated a little. But soft contact for the second out here. Galvan struck out in that first inning. He's one of the two strikeout victims of Kyle Robinson. DHing tonight, struck out on a three and two pitch. Showing bunt, and that pitch out of the strike zone. Ground ball right back up the middle. Pompey can't get there. And Galvan has a hit. Sixth of the ball game for Texas. Longhorns averaging right at 11 hits a ball game and eight runs. Back to Longhorns number 44, Max Pelu. Max Ballou here, the Longhorns right fielder, 0 for 3 against the Aggies, but 1 for 1 tonight against the Red Raiders. And this is what he did in his first at bat. Gus Owen Washford in right field just ran out of room. Yeah, dumping that one into the bullpen and bouncing it out onto the street there. He jumped on a good first pitch delivery and hammered it. Three run shot made it 4 0 at the time. Galvan has not attempted a stolen base this year. Two outs, and there's nobody near second base. Here's a ground ball hit right at Pompey. One hopper to Gavin Cash, and the inning is over. Longhorn's got a runner on, but they can't move it. Beautifully riding on that clipboard is Eric Gutierrez, one of the stars of that 2016 team. That was the second of the Red Raiders' four trips to Omaha. Cade McGee leading off here in the bottom of the third. Walked in his first at-bat. Johnson starts him with a good slider right there. There's strike two. Gus talking about former Red Raiders who made a mark for themselves, Donald Harris in the house tonight. Yeah, celebrity signing. Two-sport guy. 
A good safety and a good center fielder. As I recall, the SWC Defensive Newcomer of the Year in football and then came over here and ended up being a first round draft pick. Had a little bit of run in the big leagues with the Rangers. Two and two now to the Red Raiders, Cade McGee. It's a celebrity signing. You mentioned earlier a fairly well-known big leaguer and television spokesman pitch man was taken behind Donald Harris in the big league draft. Yes, indeed. Frank Thomas did pretty good for himself. Boy, three good sliders in that sequence from Johnson. He got ahead of McGee 0-2 with the breaking ball and then finished him with a breaker down. Nice job by Schusler to handle that, block him up, get the first out here. First strikeout tonight for LeBaron Johnson. And now Owen Washburn who flied out to left field in his first at bat. Junior on this Red Raider team, his brother, the scheduled starter on Sunday for Tim Tadlock's guys. Both of the Washburn brothers, the Gatorade High School Player of the Year during their high school career back in Wisconsin, played for their dad. Two guys with good bloodlines. Their father, Jared Washburn, a big league pitcher. He was the number one guy for the Angels the year they went to the won the World Series in the early 2000s. Two and two now to the Red Raiders right fielder. Good bloodlines on this Longhorn ball club as well. Yeah. O'Dowd out there at second base. His father, longtime front office man, GM. Does good work on the MLB network now. It's a commentator. And brothers on both sides of this game. The Bame boys. Garrett, a Red Raider. Gage, a Longhorn pitcher. Two and two again. Owen Washburn lines this one into center field. Long run there for Gasparino, but he's going to get it. Hung up long enough for the Longhorn center fielder to make that play. Well hit by Washburn, but nothing to show for it. And two away. Yeah, and you said it. That ball was well hit. It was smoked. Gasparino playing a step or two deep for most of these Red Raider hitters so far and again the little bit of wind we have and it is dying down as we go along the little bit of wind we have is carrying across to right and right center so they're shading them all that way. Here's Damian Bravo walked and scored in that Red Raider second inning. Just a little bit of flutter on those flags. Bravo now behind it. 0 and 2 comes into this ball game, leading the Big 12 in batting average, in hits, in doubles, in runs scored, in RBIs, and an on base percentage of 6-10. That's number two in the Big 12. Does not chase that pitch. 1 and 2 now. We didn't see many breaking balls from Johnson the first time through the order. The second time through the order, we've seen a few more. There's a lot more fastball split the first time through. One and two to Bravo. Hit into right field. If it stays fair, it's really trouble. It's off the fair pole. It's a home run for Bravo. Damian Bravo has tied the ball game with that long ball, his second home run of the year. He stays on a breaking ball there, John, just what we had been talking about. He stays on one and drives it down the right field line and flames it off the pole about a third of the way up. He knew he hit it well off the bat. The question was, was it going to stay fair? And there's a good look at it. Okay, maybe a fourth of the way up. And 
and that's outstanding camera work to follow that long ball off the bat of Damian Bravo. His 12-game hit streak extended, and he's tied it here at four runs apiece in the bottom of the third. Damian Bravo just continues uh, red hot at the plate. He really is. He was very good through the fall and early spring scrimmages, and Coach Tadlock talked about him in the early media coverage of the preseason media coverage and boys Damian has delivered. Here's Tracer Lopez walked and scored in that second inning. As Johnson walked the first two batters of that inning then an error. And another walk kept the Red Raiders in business. Bravo's home run a moment ago is Texas Tech's first hit of the night. Lopez there bloops that one out into short right field, and that is O'Dowd in that shift. The inning is over for the Red Raiders, but Damian Bravo's solo home run has tied this game. We're on to the fourth with four runs. It has been big for the Longhorns this season for sure. Yeah, that's a, quite a scoring advantage there. They have clearly benefited from the second time through the order across the season so far. All of their runs tonight coming in the first or so far coming in the first inning when they got four off Red Raider starter Kyle Robinson. But he has settled down allowed a double in the second a single in the third but the Longhorns have not scored since that first at bat. Schusler here flied out to right field to end that first inning. Robinson after sitting in that dugout for a little bit of time comes out and walks his first batter of the game in Schusler on four pitches. And now O'Dowd who doubled to lead off in the second. Red Raider outfield shading him a step or two around the left field, which is where he hit that double a couple innings ago. Check swing foul ball there now. No doubt who played in 10 games at Vanderbilt before the transfer to Texas, but had three doubles for Vanderbilt, one in this game tonight for the Longhorns. That'll be out of play. No doubt doubled against the Red Raiders last year in game three of the series in Austin, won by Texas 9-8, two of his three hits in that game. Doubled in game one. That's, <laughs> gosh, that's all he does yeah. against the Red Raiders. Hit doubles. That's a good pattern. Gasparino is on deck. Nobody out for the Longhorns here in the top of the fourth. Runner is not going. That pitch way up as Maxi has to go and get it. Two and two. It's popped up in the infield. Cade McGee is calling for it. He will make the play there. O'Dowd is retired. Now with one out here is 
Center fielder Will Gasparino. Freshman out of Los Angeles. Big 12 coaches have voted him the preseason freshman of the year. And he rips that ball into left field. It'll be a long run for Bravo. Gets all the way to the wall. He'll have to hurry the throw back in. Longhorns are going to have runners at second and third with one out. And the top of the order coming up. Gasparino all over a first pitch that's elevated, not over the plate. Rips it into the left field corner for a one out double here. The Red, excuse me, the Longhorns are in business with the runners on second and third and just one out. Yeah, that's Schusler at third and now Gasparino at second. Third extra base hit, another double for Gasparino. It's his fifth of the year, and Jared Thomas is at the plate with runners in scoring position. He is 0 for 2 tonight, has grounded out right back to Robinson and to Lopez at second base. Kyle Robinson going right after the Longhorn first baseman. Cash and McGee on the corners, playing even with the bag. Shading him around the left field, medium depth in the outfield. Pompey and Lopez stand back. They'll trade an out for a run. One and two pitch swing and a miss. Thomas strikes out with runners at second and third for out number two here in the fourth inning. Third strikeout for Kyle Robinson. Now in for the long run, number 15, Peyton Powell. He had come into this ball game with 20 strikeouts on the season. Has added three more, but he's not out of trouble. Peyton Powell has a single, and he struck out. He chases that 93-mile-an-hour fastball from Robinson and fouls it off. Starting tonight, Powell's 440 batting average was third best on this Longhorn team. Team batting average of 312. Six teams starting this opening weekend had batting averages at 300 or above. Longhorns, one of those. They were number six, the Red Raiders number one. But so far tonight, seven hits by Texas, one by the Red Raiders, but the ball game is tied at four. Robinson trying to get out of a jam here. Fourth start of the year. Hit right back up the middle past Kyle Robinson. This will score a couple of runs. I think Gage Harrelson has picked it up. Throw on the way back in is cut off. And Powell has delivered a two-out single right back up the middle past Robinson into center field. Two runs have scored. It's a fastball elevating out over the plate. Powell does a nice job of staying on that pitch and shooting it right back through the middle. Right through the feet of Robinson, two RBI base hit there. Nice piece of two-strike hit in there. Delivers two runs for the Longhorns. Schusler, who had led off the inning with a walk, and Gasparino, who had doubled both score there. And now Jalen Flores, one for two tonight. Singled on a pop-up into left field, and he's grounded out to McGee at third. Hits this one into center field. Long run for Gage Harrelson. Can't get there. Drops in front of him. It's another hit with two outs. Powell only moving up 90 feet. And and Texas with runners at first and second with two out. 
Gus, the Red Raider bullpen in right field beginning to stir a bit. Yeah, Matt Gardner going to come out and talk to the junior right-hander Kyle Robinson. He wants to settle. And scoreboard. Yeah, about 390 feet away. Robinson trying to get out of a mess here. Pitch inside, ball one. Brown started his collegiate career at TCU, then made the move to Texas. Hits this one a mile into right field. It's not going over the scoreboard, but Owen Washburn never moved. Three run homer off the bat of Porter Brown to right field, and the Longhorns have extended their lead. Yeah, this changeup gets elevated. Brown does a great job of waiting on it and just tattooing that thing way, way over the bullpen down the street out in the deep right field. History repeats itself for David Pierce in that Texas dugout. Big hit by Porter Brown. Five runs for Texas here in the fourth inning after the Red Raiders had fought back to tie the game. It's nine to four. Now D.H. Ryland Galvan. Ten hits by the Longhorns here in the fourth inning. And Gus, all of this coming with two outs, the home run by Brown. And think about the graphic we had to start this inning, John. I talked about yeah. all the runs that the Longhorns have scored the second and third time through the order. Third through fifth innings. It makes a difference. Robinson in that series in Austin a year ago appeared twice, pitched a total of three outs. But in doing that, allowed five hits and seven runs to Longhorn batters, and they have lit him up tonight for ten hits and nine runs. And now he's walked Galvan. Ninth hitter of the inning is coming to the plate. It'll be Ballou. Right hander working in the tech bullpen. Looks like that is Zane Petty, I believe. Second walk of the inning by Robinson, who has given up a double, a pair of singles, and a home run. Ballou hit that home run in the first inning. He grounded out on a hard hit ball. Right to the feet of Pompey in the third, who fielded the ball on a short hop and threw him out. Sophomore out of Alito. Left-handed hitter, Ballou, 2-0 and oh in the count. Now ball three. Gus. Green light, no green light here. Well, it's not a bad time for it. Up nine to four. Feast on a guy that's fighting his command. Going on a cold night, trying to rush a guy to get loose is not ideal. But this inning turned on a dime. Think about it, John. We had runners on second, third, and two outs. Yeah. Kind of zipping right along. No need to have bullpen activity single single homer now Petty working with some pace in that bullpen now back to back walks and here's Schusler who led off the inning with a walk and would score throw back to second is not going to be in time letting Galvan know the Red Raiders haven't forgotten about him and it gives more time in the bullpen to warm up
Schusler does not go around on the appeal. First pitch breaker to start him there, able to hold up. These 10 hits are by far the most that Robinson has allowed in any of his outings this season. That ball hit down the third baseline and it's fair. That is trouble. At least two bases for Schusler and a couple of more runs are going to score from Texas. Here's a throw home, not in time. Got past Maxi. Throw back to third is not going to be in time either as Schusler dives in there. A double into the corner in left field scores a pair. Galvan and Ballou, and on the throw home, Schusler's coming all the way around to third base. Yeah, and the other thing we had, John, was interference on Tracer Lopez. Ballou just ran up his back and collided with him. Ended up coming around to score anyway, but the call was going to allow him to score. Coach Stadlock out to get some clarity on this. Yeah, Ballou was going to be safe at home either way I believe because the umpires were all over that seven runs have scored for the Longhorns here there is a question though as the umpire and crew gets together there certainly looked as though TJ Pompey wanted that play at third appealed but the umpire and crew led by Chris Koski have another look at that play at third base, Gus. It's very similar to the one we saw in the first inning here, John. Well, clearly the ball beat the runner there. It's just a matter of, of is the tag on him before the right arm of Schusler gets on the bag. And Schusler kind of swims that tag, as you'll see a lot of guys do when they slide head first. Sort of giving it the left hand and then taking it away, and McGee caught the ball way in front of the bag. He was diving and reaching to apply the tag. Red Raiders desperate to get it out and get out of this inning. Yeah, it looked like the tag there gets him up in the chest, but still, again, Let me ask you a this. great job. Is the tag on him when the hand comes off? And does that mean we'll have to see here? The Hard question. to tell from this angle. Yeah. The right He's, hand is there. Now the glove is on him. Does he, when he sort of slides past it, does he come off the bag just a tick? And maybe that's what they're looking at here. Right. Somewhere in there, maybe. No, uh, the no, hand I, stays on it. So yeah. that's, that's a really good effort there by Schuster. Hand never comes off the bag. The question is just whether or not the tag is on his chest before his arm is on the bag. But seven runs have crossed here for Texas in this inning on five hits. A couple of doubles, a home run, and two singles. Kyle Robinson in this fourth inning walked three batters so far. All of them have scored. And John, during all of this, Zane Petty should be ready to go. Yeah, not, not sure that when the umpiring crew comes out with their decision yeah. on Schusler at third base, if he is indeed safe, I, it would not be surprising. Flowing All right, here. here is the call, and it will stand at third. Oh, Schusler is the safe the there on the outstanding slide. Now looking at that Red Raider dugout, will we see Tim Tadlock? And we will. Tim Tadlock will make a pitching change here in the fourth inning. As the Longhorns have roughed up the Red Raider starter, Kyle Robinson, for seven runs in the inning, 11 in the ball game. We'll tell you about that new Red Raider pitcher when we come back. Batter of the inning for Texas. Longhorns have scored seven runs already. O'Dowd doubled in the second, popped up to third in this inning in a, in a previous at bat. And John, all seven of those with two outs. Yeah. They had second and third. And two outs when Peyton Powell drilled a two strike pitch right, back in the middle for a two RBI base back. hit. That was fallen by another single, and then the Porter Brown three run blast. 
Yeah, then a couple of more walks and the double by Schusler, and here we are. Zane Petty trying to wrap this inning up. Swing and a miss, 92 from Petty as he starts O'Dowd with Heater. Red Raider fans are accustomed to a lot of runs being scored in this ballpark, but most of that has been from the home team, not the visitors. The infield playing O'Dowd a couple of steps around to pull. Tracer Lopez a couple of steps out into shallow right field, but the outfield shaded around to left. That ball lifted into left field. That's right where Gage Harrelson was in left center, and he's there to make the catch and end the inning. But that's very different now when the Red Raiders come to bat. They ended that third, tied at four. Longhorns have blown it open. The Red Raiders have a long way to, to go to get back in it. Maxie, Harrelson, and Pompey do up. Yeah, really long offensive inning for the Horns. Have to see if the Baron Johnson comes out throwing strikes, and he does right there. Long time to sit on a cold night. Red Raiders, though, at home in this ballpark in their seven-game winning streak, are averaging 19 runs a game here at home. Maxie reached on an error on his first at bat. Ground ball to Flores. Across the diamond to Thomas, and the Red Raiders' leadoff batter here in the fourth is retired. And for the Red Raiders, number two, Gage Harrelson. Here's Gage Harrelson. One of four walks. Allowed him on in that second inning. He would come around. He did not score. He got to third, but was unable to get in as the Red Raiders' first four batters reached base in the inning, and the next three were all retired. Gus clearly seven run lead makes it a lot easier on the guy on the mound. Oh, you bet. Yeah, that's uh, allows you to just be in the strike zone, be very, very direct. You don't have to pitch around anyone. And all of this Captain Obvious stuff I'm saying right here. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's how it goes. The Raiders looking for some traffic. They're trying to stack some base runners. Big hill to climb. At four of them in that second inning. Three of them scored. Damian Bravo had a solo home run in the third. That tied the ball game. Then Texas scored seven runs in their next at bat. Inside ball three. Three and two to the Red Raiders center fielder. Johnson going to the breaker there. Wilson laying off. There's the two strike chase showing you all the breaking stuff down, probably. One of those sinking fastballs. That's ball four. Second time tonight. Gage Harrelson is walked and Red Raiders have a base runner with one out. T.J. Pompey was the Big 12 newcomer of the week for the week the Red Raiders had that series against Texas Southern a couple of weekends ago. 10 for 16 in those three games. 
couple of doubles, a home run. He drove in nine runs. Red Raiders would love to see the long ball here from their young shortstop. That ball got away from Schusler, and Gage Harrelson is off to second base. Looks like a breaking ball. Down and out. Yeah, there it is. Good breaker down and out. Schusler unable to get around that ball and knock it down. Harrelson down to second. Takes away the traditional double play at least. Pompey, that is foul past third base. Gus, your ball boys aren't jumping on that ball quite as quickly <laughs> as we've seen. Yeah, they're a step slow. I think they also probably got the directive after the activities of a couple weekends ago. Like, you better make sure that thing has stopped rolling and you have been waved out. <laughs> well, a spring break has officially started here. Yeah, with temperatures around 40. Yeah. We, we spent the two weeks <laughs> leading up to it in the high 70s and low 80s, but now spring breaks here. We're going to have a cold weekend. Wind has picked up as well. Thought it was supposed to die off, but it has, it sure has. begun to blow again. Kind of across from left to right, a little bit out to right. Balls hit to that, that part of the ballpark. Going to have a little juice to them. Anything that hangs up out into the left field corner going to get knocked down a bit. Poppy's first career hit was a triple for the Red Raiders. That'll be out of play. Error by a Red Raider fan. <laughs> LeBaron Johnson has topped 80 pitches in this ball game, but that's a very long way from the most he's thrown in a game. skies that one into shallow left field. Flores is calling for it. Brown is coming in, but Flores will make the play, Gus. There's the wind maybe knocking that one down just a bit. Yeah, pushing it back to the infield just a tick. Pushing him over to right just a bit. But again, this is we're going to see bigger wins. And I don't know that we're going to see bigger wins this weekend, I guess. Thanks. Thank goodness. But on bigger wind days, those can be a little more treacherous than they are tonight. The biggest trouble in this ballpark tonight with fly balls have been the pale sky twilight fly balls that were at least the one that was misplayed by the Red Raiders that set up a three run homer in the first inning. Yeah. Less about the wind and more about just the time of night. Obviously now a dark sky. A bit easier to pick those balls up in the outfield. A lot easier than right here at the beginning of the ball game in the twilight. LeBaron Johnson's got one complete game in his Longhorn career. Did that in the NCAA tournament a year ago against Miami when he threw 129 pitches. Longhorns won that game. Gavin Cash trying to extend the Red Raider inning here. With two outs and a runner at second base, that's Gage Harrelson. They're playing him to pull on the infield. Shift on for the Red Raider first baseman. He can he can hit it over him and hit it out of the park. He's got 30 home runs for his career. Johnny had a school record four doubles in a ball game last weekend, and I think three of those shot through the shortstop, over the shortstop, and out into left center field. So the horns are playing him to pull, but they're also pitching him so that he'll hit into that shift. Probably not setting up fastballs away right here. Four doubles and a home run in that game. He's hitting that one off himself. Chris Koski, our home plate umpire, going to give Cash a minute to walk this one off as he 
walks the ball out to uh, Johnson on the mound. Exchange some pleasantries and let Cash get his feet back under him. He looks like he's ready to go. That hurts any time, but on a <laughs> night where it's <laughs> pretty chilly. Yeah, right. At, that's that's going to be even worse. Right at 40 degrees, that gets a little bit dicier. And Harrison should be able to get a pretty big lead here because Flores, the shortstop, out in shallow right center here. Two and two, runner goes, pitches inside to Cash. No throw to third base. You can kind of see that coming, and you can also see why Texas not overly concerned about that. Again, playing up seven runs. Focus is on Gavin Cash right here, but Harrelson saw what I saw. Huge lead and took the bag. Here's the three and two. Swing and a miss. Gavin Cash strikes out, second strikeout for Johnson. The Red Raiders, Bill Gasparino to lead off for the Longhorns. Gus, a uh, fairly well-known dad, certainly, in yes. that family. Yes, indeed. Front office man with the Los Angeles Dodgers, I believe the director scouting. That it pains me to say this, but I remember watching his dad play here <laughs> <laughs> for the Oklahoma State Cowboys in the early days. I believe that was in the early days of the Big 12, maybe at the very end of the Big 8. You were just a young yeah, kid I was just at a that kid, time. Yeah, that's right. Probably asking for a batting glove. <laughs> Gasparino is one for two tonight, and he's going to have his second hit here. Pokes that ball into the corner out in right field, headed for second base as Owen Washburn runs it down, and the, he overruns second base, but the Red Raiders can't get the ball there quickly enough, but the Longhorns have their lead guy on here in the fifth, and the top of the order is coming up. Yeah, it's an 0-2 breaking ball, and that pitch probably needs to be buried. It was down, but out over the plate. Gasparino with a good two strike approach as he stays on that pitch and drives it into the right field corner. Talking about a six foot six kid with long arms. He does a nice job of letting that pitch travel. Yeah, that probably needed to be bounced in. See if he could get a chase swing and not a hittable pitch on 0 2. Longhorns have four doubles tonight. Gasparino's got two of them. The top of the order. Jared Thomas up. He is 0 for 3 tonight. Zane Petty on in relief of Kyle Robinson. Thomas is the only Longhorn batter tonight in the starting lineup that does not have a hit, and he may have one now. Rips that one out to right field as well. Past Washburn to the wall. Throw is headed to second. It is not quite in time. Thomas has the double. Gasparino has scored, and the Longhorns have 12 runs. Yeah, Thomas jumping all over. Fastball here and drilling that into the right field corner. Another good swing. Back to back doubles to start this fifth inning for Texas. Red Raiders have been unable to silence the Longhorn bats for long. They did not score in the second or the third. First, fourth, and the fifth have been trouble, and there is nobody out here in this fifth inning. Peyton Powell up. Two for three night working for the Longhorns third baseman. Both are singles. That one in the fourth drove in two runs. Petty starts Powell with a breaker for the strike and then gets the fastball in with the letters for the Chase. He's ahead right now on two. More than 4,400 in the ballpark tonight. 
for this battle of ranked Big 12 teams. David Pierce in that Longhorn dugout calls Peyton Powell just an exceptional player. And he's got three hits. That one ripped into center field. Gage Harrelson quickly to it. And back in, but three straight hits here by Texas in this fifth inning. Already a run in, and nobody out. And you're at a point in the ball game. That seven-run inning, especially on a Friday night, really changes the complexion of things in terms of the pitchers that will be used, maybe for both teams. If you're Texas Tech and trying to maybe do something to help the case on Tuesday, Wednesday, you want to tighten up this margin and make the Longhorns get into some key arms. Right now, Tech not going to use tough arms out of their bullpen. And so a big inning like that seven run fourth really changes the complexion this early in a series. Jalen Flores for the Longhorns with runners on the corners and nobody out. Singled into left field in his first at bat in the first inning and that fourth also singled. Grounded out in one other trip. Swing and a miss there. Although Gus, I think of a game here two years ago. That's strike three. But think of a game here two years ago that wound up 16 to 12. Yeah. Yeah, there was two Friday night games last year against TCU and Oklahoma State that had big margins like this. The Red Raiders came back and won them. Got some work to do. Gonna have to hang some zeros as well. That's the most important part. Yeah. Porter Brown now bats with one out and runners at the corners. Brown is two for three, singled in the first, grounded out in the third, but then hit that massive home run in the fourth inning. He jumped on a changeup the previous at bat and hit that way, way over the bullpen and right field and down the street. We had just been talking about Coach Pierce. Talking about his power. Boy, he flexed it just a couple pitches later. <laughs> yes, he did. Senior out of San Antonio. Zane Petty working around him. The count is 3 and 0. Oh. Batting for the fourth time in the ball game here in the fifth inning. First three batters in the inning all reach two of them on extra base hits. Single by Powell. As runners at the corners, one out. Brown has four home runs. This Texas team, two in the ball game, giving them 24 for the year. They are the top home run hitting team in the Big 12. Now the bases are loaded. A walk to Porter Brown. D.H. Ryland Galvan will bat with the bases full up of Longhorns. Sophomore from Sinton. Trying to add to the Longhorn lead and an off-speed pitch from Zane Petty. He 
Swings through it for strike one. Petty's had three different 0 2 counts so far this inning. Tenth hit of the season for Galvan is going to leave the ballpark. Three run blast for the Longhorn DH off Zane Petty. And the Longhorns are piling it on the Red Raiders here in this series opener. Gus, it didn't take long for that one to get out of the ballpark. That is a grand slam. Yeah, that ball was tattooed. First pitch breaker followed by a fastball. It's belt high, middle in. Got a lot of the strike zone, and Galvan did not miss it. Five more runs for the Longhorns here in the fifth, and that blast will send a lot of this sellout crowd of Red Raider fans toward the exits on a cold Friday night. Ballou here with a towering pop-up into shallow left field. T.J. Pompey runs it down near the foul line for out number two. A really nice play there by Pompey. That ball started to drift just to tick back into the field. He did a nice job of settling himself, making that play. And for the long horse, the number 10, Kimball Schusler. Three home runs for the Longhorns tonight. Galvan's grand slam a moment ago. Now Schusler, who's got a double in three trips to the plate tonight. Schuessler came to the plate twice in the fourth inning, walked and scored, then later doubled in a couple of runs. Hits that ball a mile high into right field. It's a long run for Owen Washburn, drifting back near the warning track, but he does make the catch. The inning is over, but five more runs for the, the state graphic is. Correct. Somebody's got a no hitter in the ninth inning. Did you see that? It was four to nothing, no hits, no runs. I was looking at that Kansas TCU score. I was too, but and that's why it's just as my eyes went over to that graphic the second time, like, oh, we need to uh, do some homework there. Here's Austin Green. Going to try and bring the Red Raiders back with that long ball out to right field. Takes. LeBaron Johnson out of here. Second hit tonight for the Red Raiders. They have both been home runs. Gus, the solo blasts aren't going to beat you, but that is a start for the Red Raiders. And Coach Pierce talked to us about that today, John. On a night where the ball might fly, what gets you beat is not the solo home run. It's creating a bunch of traffic around it. The Red Raiders three runs second inning. Three walks in an error and no hits in that inning, but uh, they've since managed a couple of solo shots since then. LeBaron Johnson trying to hang on here and get through five. There is a left-hander working in the Longhorn pen. Showed that graphic for Texas and what they've done in the middle innings, third, fourth, and fifth. Red Raiders have scored 77 runs in the third, fourth, and fifth, and now Cade McGee into the corner in left field, stand up double for the Red Raiders third baseman. Back to back hits here in the fifth inning, home run and a double. It's a long, long way to go for the Red Raiders, but it's a start. And he jumps on a, look like a slider that was elevated. Just jumps on it, hooks it, barrels it down into the left field corner and off the face of that Longhorn bullpen. The left-hander working with some pace now. 
This is Owen Washburn, 0 for 2 tonight, but he's put the ball in play both times, flied out to left and to center. Mentioned earlier, the Red Raiders, who lead the Big 12 in runs and hits, average 19 runs a game and 16 hits here in their ballpark. They're going to need all of those to come back in this ball game, and Powell just can't run down that Washburn foul ball. Another chance for the Red Raider right fielder. On deck is Damian Bravo. The shift is on for the Red Raiders. Owen Washburn, three infielders on that first base side. Runner at second is Cade McGee. Gus, a moment ago, Austin Green hit his 14th career home run. Owen Washburn has 13 career home runs. Just like Austin Green had. Well, Peyton Powell holding his ground at third base. But there is no one at shortstop as they're shifted again. A lot of room. Swing and a miss by Washburn struck him out. Third strikeout tonight for Johnson. And now one away here in the fifth inning. Yeah, that was just a fastball down. Washburn really expanding the zone and chasing that pitch. 93 mile an hour delivery. You can see him kind of grimacing knowing that he chased one right there. Damian Bravo walked and scored in the Red Raiders second. Hit a solo home run in the third. Spent his summer in the Pacific Empire League out in California playing for the Heldsburg Prune Packers. <laughs> Gus, you know their motto? No, I do not. Ah, uh, where summer fun hits a home run. I like it. Here's Damian Bravo's long ball. Speaking of home runs, did that back in the third inning. Red Raiders' first hit and first run provided off a hit. They had gotten three in the second, but did not have a hit in that inning. Bravo's hitting streak has covered every game this season. 13 of them now. Nine of those 13, he's had more than one hit. So three and one pitch is coming up. Gus with an 11 run lead. Johnson can throw whatever he wants. Yep. And that's no one strikes, no doubt. That ball, oh, a strike. Bravo thought that was ball four and was headed towards first. He. Tells the umpire my fault on the way back. Yes, you did. <laughs> not, not <laughs> yet. Hey, my bad. I wasn't trying to show you up there. My fault. Good call. That was a strike. <laughs> All, right. All right. Good work by him. Johnson throws a great slider. That pitch off the plate, though, at 94. And Bravo walks for the second time tonight. Yeah, it really does give you an indication of the quality of the arm. For LeBaron Johnson, it looks like his base as Woodcox is making his way to the plate. Not bad against the Longhorns in Austin a year ago. Texas won all three of those games, but Woodcox went three for four. Drove in a run, also scored in that series. And a chance to Move a couple of Red Raiders up on the Bates Pass here and maybe get one home or both. Senior out of Houston's Lamar High School.
Longhorns are not holding either Cade McGee or Bravo on at first or second. Woodcox did hit a couple of home runs in the opener of the Red Raiders Texas Southern series earlier this season. Two and one. You know, Whitehead trying to land the change up there and that pitch misses well off the outside corner. That's ball three. Whitehead to pitch away from loading the bases with the Red Raiders. McGee doubled, Bravo walked. And now Lopez, our, our Woodcox batting for Lopez. And that's ball four. The bases are loaded. The Red Raiders down a bunch right here looking for some traffic. And they're getting it. That's the seventh walk of the game by Longhorn pitching. Six of those by starter LeBaron Johnson, and now that one by Whitehead. Maxi tonight has reached on an error and grounded out. Longhorns would look for an inning ending double play. They've turned eight this year. Whitehead way off the mark. And Whitehead goes back to the windup here now with the bases loaded and one out. He's just trying to get comfortable and find the strike zone. The temperatures into the high 30s now. Again, the wind blowing across from right to, excuse me, from left to right. Forecasts are calling for 50s and 60s the next two days, but this is the cold game for sure. <laughs> Knew that coming in. The weather boys got the temperature right, but that wind has not died off like the forecast mentioned. Maxi, big swing and a miss. Whitehead pulling a string on him right there. There is one out. Red Raiders do have the bases loaded. They've got a long way to go to catch up with the Longhorn. Maxi hit four home runs a year ago, has won this season in 16 at-bats before tonight. Got him looking. Yeah, Got like the Red Raider catcher looking at strike three, guys. Yeah, it looked like... Maxie was looking for something soft. He had seen that change up a couple pitches earlier in that sequence. Whitehead getting the 84 mile an hour fastball in under the hands to freezing. Two outs now. Red Raiders do have a run in, but they've got the bases loaded now still. And Gage Harrelson at the plate. Harrelson, two trips tonight. He's walked both times. That's a called strike. I don't know that Harrelson liked it. So he'll leave the batter's box and step back in. Red Raider fans who remain clearly did not like the strike call. Harrelson has swiped a couple of bases tonight after getting on. But the Red Raiders need a base hit here. That's hit into left center field. But the wind is going to hold it up. Porter Brown there to make the catch, and the Red Raiders get one in the inning, but they leave the bases loaded. We played five full here at Dan.
string together some scoreless innings against these Longhorn batters. Travis Sanders now in the game at second and Davis Rivers behind the plate. That's O'Dowd to lead off and Kasi hits him on the foot with his first pitch. Four strikeouts tonight by Red Raider pitching and four walks allowed. That is the first hit batter of the night by the Red Raider pitching staff. And now Gasparino, who has two doubles tonight in three trips to bat. He has doubled in the fourth, doubled in the fifth, and scored each of those times. Now with six doubles for the season. Kasi is thrown against UT Arlington and Texas Southern in his other outings before this against Texas. <laughs> Top of the order is on deck for Texas. Two pitch from Kasi coming up. <laughs> Gus winning the opener doesn't clinch a series by any means, but it certainly will be an advantage for Texas if they hang on. Yeah, no doubt about that. And, and with this margin the way it is both teams well I would say it this way maybe neither team going to use top bullpen arms so it could make the next couple games a little more interesting yeah that seven run fourth inning changed everything really sets the Longhorns up for success this weekend no doubt yeah Kasi thought he had a called strike three, but does not get it two and two to the Longhorn center fielder. Interestingly, both these teams, Texas Tech and Texas, their next Big 12 series against Baylor. <laughs> Longhorns are playing out of the conference next weekend while the Red Raiders will be in Waco. And then the following weekend, Baylor at Texas. Ground ball down towards third. McGee knocks it down but cannot make a play. Cannot come up with that hard hit ball behind the bag at third base. Reno going down and getting a little sinking fastball down and in, chops it down the line. He's trying to backhand it, unable to come up with it cleanly. Appears as though it will be scored a single, a hit. Gasparino has a three hit night. And now the top of the order for Texas and Jared Thomas. Thomas doubled and scored in his last at bat. He had grounded out twice and struck out prior to that. First two batters had reached base in the fifth inning for Texas, and they would score five runs. They've 
Got their first two on here in the sixth. That is a mile high fly ball into center field. Harrelson is back near the warning track. Will make the catch. Long fly ball out for Thomas, but moving down to third from second is O'Dowd. Gasparino stays at first, and there is one out. That ball carried pretty well and sent the Red Raiders center fielder back nearly 400 feet to make the catch. And here's Peyton Powell, who is three for four tonight with three singles. Has raised that batting average up over 460. Singled in the first, singled in the fourth. That drove in a couple of runs, singled again, and scored in the fifth. He's been on base three times, scored all three. Two and nothing from Kasi. Longhorns tonight with runners in scoring position are Hitting 500. They are 8 for 16. They've got 16 runs on the scoreboard. That's ball four. Longhorns have the bases loaded now. Gus looked close. That 3 0 pitch just down and out of the zone. Now the sacks are jammed. Red Raider infield still looking for a double play ball here. Trying not to give in, but did not get the call. And now Jalen Flores struck out in his last at bat, but he's got two singles and three other trips. And it nubs that one off the end of the bat over near first base, but Gavin Cash can't get there quickly enough in foul territory. He left that one up. <laughs> Top four batters in this Texas lineup have eight hits tonight between them. That may get into the seats as well. Gus, the bottom part of the batting order, has eight hits as well. Longhorns have spread it around. Everybody in the lineup has at least one. You know, one of the reports that we had had on this Texas ball club was that they were a physical offensive group, and they have shown that tonight. Swing and a miss. Strike three for Flores. Now two away, but the bases are still loaded for Texas. And they have had a big night scoring with two outs. Porter Brown. Hit one a mile back in the fourth inning. Three-run homer to right field. With 
two outs. The Longhorns have six hits tonight. Brown chasing that one at 91 from Kasi. Yeah, the three run homer on the first inning, part of that four run first came with two outs. And then all seven runs in the fourth came with two outs. Nothing in two to Brown. Here's that massive home run back in the fourth inning from the Horns left fielder. Another change up over the middle part of the plate, elevated a little bit. And Brown did not miss. Really good swing on that. Two and two now. Longhorns have three home runs tonight. Brown hit his in the fourth. Ballou hit one out in the first and Galvan in the fifth. Now no place to put Porter Brown. Three and two the count. Dowd's at third. He was hit by a pitch. Gasparino singled. And Powell at first walked. Runners on the move. It's outside away from Brown. Ball four. And another run scores for Texas. O'Dowd, who led off the inning, being hit by a pitch, scores. 17 to 5 Longhorns. Now Galvan, who hit a three run that homer in the fifth. The six, four, five, and six Galvan. hitters tonight in that Texas batting order have the home runs. There are five doubles in the ball game as well by Longhorn hitters. Galvan has struck out, singled, walked, and homered. There's strike two. Horns have a run in, but Kasi trying to limit the damage. 0 oh, and 2 pitches off the plate. Galvan does not chase. Playing with an injured thumb in the role as DH tonight. The thumb preventing him from catching in the ball game. Maybe for a while, but he can swing the bat. Tossi bounced that one in, but blocked by Rivers. Yeah, and what becomes evident for these Longhorn hitters is that Kasi is he's thrown a bunch of strikes this inning, but he hasn't commanded that breaking ball. And so the pitch to look for in this spot becomes a fastball. A team like this getting to hit fastballs when they're looking for it. Not ideal for Kasi. Now he's run the count to three balls and two strikes. Kasi has already walked a run in here in this sixth inning. Runners on the move, and that's ball four. He's walked in a pair. Gasparino scoring from third on the bases loaded walk. Peyton Powell moving to third. Porter Brown is at second, and Galvan, who just walked, is at first. Kasi has come into the ball game, hit a batter, allowed a single, and walked three. And Ballou, who homered in the first, is at the plate. Thought you were about to chirp me. 
It's his only hit of the night, but it gave the Longhorns a 4 nothing lead in their first at-bat. Longhorns had averaged eight runs and 11 hits a game. They've got 18 and 16 at the moment. Yeah, those numbers are going to get some helium after this. Yeah. Max Huffling working in the tech bullpen. Three and one now from Kasi. Freshman out of Katie struggling here. Walk three of the last four batters. Bases are loaded. Swing and a miss for strike two. There are two outs, two runs across, and the Bases loaded with Longhorns all on the move on this pitch. Swing and a miss by Baluwi struck him out. Struck him out to end the inning, but it, it will be really nice when that is wrapped up and it is scheduled to be done before the start of the upcoming football season. Will Burns to lead off pinch hitting here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Yeah, Coach McGuire spoke to a group of campus staffers yesterday and said that thing is on schedule to be completed before practice, fall camp. I don't know, we used to call them two-a-days back in the day, but I think it's fall camp now, but I like it. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I think two-a-days are a thing of the past. Yeah, they do. Man. Swing and a miss by Will Burns. Burns has one hit this season. It was a double against Gardner-Webb. Regardless, I bring that up to say it is on schedule at this point. People ask me, is that thing going to be done? Apparently. <laughs> and boy, that double T is great big, folks. What do you see it in person? That thing is way high in the sky and much, much bigger than the old one. Ready to light up. It will be a suitable replacement to all of those who, of us who grew up getting our scores and game information from that board. Back in the old days, that's how we read who made the tackle. <laughs> Got all kinds of information. And that's another Andrew 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 Andrew. At one time, that scoreboard was outside, and then over the years, a football building kind of grew around it. Now, a great big new one up on top. Swing and a miss. Will Burns struck out. Burns had worked the count to three and two, but Ace Whitehead gets him his second strikeout since coming into the ball game back in the fifth inning for starter LeBaron Johnson. 13, now the Red Raiders back to the top of the order and Gavin Cash. Cash hitless in three trips to the plate tonight. Flied out to left, grounded out into the shift that the Longhorns put on in the second, and then struck out in the fourth. Cash has a five game hitting streak working. Hit that one off the third baseman who was playing over there near that shortstop spot because of the shift. Powell does not make the play, and that will be scored as an error. And that's actually the shortstop. It's the third baseman okay. who drifts over into shallow right field. They flip it that way, and so that's Flores unable to make the play. And he is charged with his first error of the year. Third error of the night by the Longhorns, but 18 runs have overcome any misplayed balls. Certainly to this point. Now Austin Green.
Green has grounded out a couple of times and also hit a solo home run leading off the fifth inning. Garrett Bame is on deck. He will hit for Cade McGee. And I would assume go in at third base. Austin's home run, the 14th of his career. Takes a cold strike there at 83 from Whitehead. Longhorns have used only two pitchers tonight. The starter, LeBaron Johnson, and then Whitehead, who came in in that fifth inning. Whitehead giving them exactly what they're looking for here. Love to have him eat up some innings on a cold night, pitching with a huge lead. Go hang some zeros, save some bullpen. That ball got away from Schusler behind home plate and scooting down to second is Cash. Whitehead could give up a couple of runs an inning and still the Red Raiders might not be able to catch up. It goes as a pass ball. Ball four to Austin Green. Well, Red Raiders have a couple of base runners with one out. Second walk allowed by Whitehead. He's also struck out a couple of Red Raider hitters. And now a pinch hitter. This is Garrett Bain will bat. Bame's brother is a pitcher on the Longhorns. Limited number of at bats for the freshman out of Taylor. Who played at Hutto High School only seven at bats, but he does have a home run. Did that pinch hitting against Gardner Webb. And he's pinch hitting here in the bottom of the sixth inning against Texas. It's lifted foul on the right side, but not enough room for Thomas. There's a happy youngster. Yeah. A souvenir. Gotta like that. Pays to hang around, right? <laughs> Makes it easier to get those foul balls when <laughs> much of the capacity crowd is headed home. It'll fill back up again tomorrow and Sunday as these two play the first three games of their Big 12 conference season, both ranked. Texas coming in number 24. The Red Raiders are number 17. That's in the D1 baseball poll. Red Raiders are in all five of the college baseball polls that are put out. Well, Bame is hanging in there. Longhorn infield looking for a double play ball. Whitehead, the 5'10", 195 pound junior out of Lamb Passes. Bame rips that ball into right field. Has a hit. Red Raiders are going to hold the runners up, and we got a problem at second base for the Red Raiders. And not being able to get back on the bag there, Austin Green. He had rounded second, thinking was headed towards third, but Gavin Cash was stopped there. 
And on the throw back into the infield, Austin Green tagged out at second base. It just can't happen. And Austin Green's got to see what's going on in front of him. A situation like this, they're not going to take any chances over there at second. You can see him checking Coach Thomas before he got to the bag. Must not have picked him up quickly enough. He just can't run into an out right there. He's got to see what's going on in front of him. Two outs for the Red Raiders, and now instead of having one and the bases full for Washburn, Red Raider right fielder batting for the fourth time tonight. He is 0 for 3. Washburn is flied out to left, lined out to center field, and struck out in those three trips. Lefty on lefty, and Washburn rips that ball into right field, but right at Ballou. And the Red Raiders face seven, eight, and nine in the order. Yeah, last time out against Gardner Webb, not so good for the transfer from Abilene Christian. Yeah, it was a three inning save, three innings of one run baseball against Oregon. And I was thinking of. Well, they're at Globe Life Park in Arlington, Texas. That's where the Red Raiders played their first five ball games of the season. Huffling becomes the Red Raiders' fourth pitcher of the night. Cole Cossey win an inning, a lot of hit. Three walks, hit a man, struck out a couple, two runs scored. They were both earned. Both on bases loaded walks. It's Schuessler, O'Dowd, and Gasparino do up for the Longhorns. Schuessler uh, is one for three tonight with a double. That came on his second at bat of the fourth inning and drove in a couple of runs. Huffling comes in the extra large size, Gus. Six foot nine. And left handed. Out of Edmond, Oklahoma, by way of Abilene Christian. Yeah, pitched against the Red Raiders two years in a row, and now. Pitching for the Red Raiders. He was tough on the Red Raiders, as I recall. Yes, he was. Breaking ball there stays up and away. Now three and two. Huffling a grad transfer. That ball hit over near the Texas dugout. Disappeared, Gus. It did rattling around. Seems to be <laughs> seems to be okay. We'll do it again. Ball's lined into center field. Long run for Harrelson, and he's able to make the play. How about that? Great speed for the Red Raiders center fielder, and runs down a line drive off the bat of Schuessler. Robs him of a hit there for sure. Yeah, that ball well struck. Harrelson had a good read on it. Good first step. On the half 
afterburners and track that down in deep center field. Really nice play to start the seventh inning. Yeah, at least we think that's Gage Harrelson. <laughs> it's a masked man playing center field. Yes, it is. <laughs> there are a lot of substitutions, but I think the outfield is still intact. Bravo in left, Harrelson in center, and Washburn in right. Just a quick check, Gus. Uh, temperature is at 38 degrees. It's not exactly warm enough by any means and the winds are still gusting to 22 and I think that's exactly what they're doing here. O'Dowd pops that one up into left field. Bravo is there. And there are two away. Huffling has retired the first two batters he has seen. Now Will Gasparino, who has a three-hit night working. Two of those are doubles. Raised the batting average up over 350 now. Longhorns have not been retired in order at any time tonight. <laughs> Broadcasters of Jinx yeah, hanging that, that in the was. air. I should have been talking free throws. <laughs> Gasparino's got four hits, lines that into left. Bravo gets it back very quickly, but Gasparino in the nine hole has four hits tonight off the Red Raiders. He scored all three times he's been on base prior to that. that Good quiet. Approach there, fastball down. He smoked it to left. I will say this, Gus. If for Red Raider fans, there have been two innings in which the Longhorns have sent only four men to the plate, and <laughs> those are the innings that they have not scored tonight. Huffling's pitch to Thomas gets away from Rivers. Yeah, that pitch bounces in for the wild pitch. Fastball, big location miss there. Doing nothing uh, to Thomas. Grounded out back to the mound in his first at bat, then grounded out to second in the second inning, struck out in the fourth, doubled in the fifth, flied out to center in the sixth. A lot of trips to the plate tonight. And the Longhorns still have two more at bats after this. Two and two now. Interestingly, the Longhorns tonight have struck out six times they came into this ball game as the second place team in the Big 12 with the most strikeouts. Only Oklahoma State batters had struck out more often right there. Swing and a miss by Thomas. Rivers is going to have to throw it down. That'll end the inning. Longhorns do not Longhorns. score. And we head to the bottom of the seventh inning. It's stretch time. Yeah, it's going to take a bunch. <laughs> Need a lot of a lot of traffic to get those to put this game back into reach. Ace really? Whitehead giving them exactly what they're looking for. Well, here's a guy who can do that, but that long ball off the bat of Damian Bravo coming down on the warning track and in the glove of Max Ballou. Bravo homered back in the third inning for the Red Raiders' first run of the ball game with that a long out in the deep right field.
Bravo has, you know, walked twice tonight, had that home run and that fly out. Now Travis Sanders to bat. Pinch hitting. He's come in the ball game defensively. Rolls that one down the third baseline. Powell is there. Throw across the diamond is in time. Sanders retired. A really nice Red play Raiders there. Two away. Yeah. yeah, really nice play there by Powell. A little off speed pitch. Sanders and rolls over. Good throw on the move there by Powell. He puts it right on the back. Really nice play. This will be Davis Rivers batting for the first time tonight. Tim Tadlock may be asking if that play could be reviewed, but Gus, the Red Raiders out of request. I think you get two in the first seven innings, if I remember that rule correctly. Not exactly sure what Coach Stanlock was asking for there. Replay appears as though Sanders was indeed out. Well, and John, I, I mean, if I, I don't, if them was questioning the call at first base, and I don't think he was, I think he would have gone to talk to the first base up. That was an interesting conversation. You would go to the home plate. I don't know what that was about. But. Conversation over in Davis Rivers at the plate. He has come in to catch for the Red Raiders, relieving Dylan Maxey. Gus, the Red Raiders have not gone in order in the ball game either in any inning, despite the difference in the score. River is a big swing and a miss. He's only batted eight times, but among his three hits are a double and a home run. Ace Whitehead now three scoreless innings of relief. Three and a third now. John River is there to end the inning. Three up, three down for Texas Tech in the home set. Played high school baseball in Rowlett. He will face two, three, and four in the Longhorns batting order. Do up, Pal Flores and Brown. Fifth pitcher tonight for Tim Tadlock. Powell has three hits tonight. All of them are singles. He has also struck out and walked in five previous trips to the plate. Raised his batting average to 463. Gets the free pass, Gus, leadoff batter on for Texas. That has not been a good place for the Red Raiders tonight. Not ideal. Now Jalen Flores he has struck out a couple of times, but does have two hits, both singles, and grounded out. Four of the Longhorns' 18 runs were batters that were walked to be put on base. The Red Raiders also hit a batter in the sixth. He came around to score. Yeah, 
three good breakers in this sequence from Parker. He's working ahead in the count. One and two is the count. Parker now on the mound. Davis Rivers is behind the plate. Stripling, Landon Stripling's at first. Travis Sanders playing second. Will Burns is at short. Garrett Bame at third. All replacement players in the infield along with Rivers behind home plate, but still the starting outfield trio of Bravo, Harrelson, and Washburn. Get right back up the middle under the legs of Parker. The Red Raiders make a play. Will Burns. How about that? Or is it? Yeah, that was Travis Sanders okay, there. Okay, Sanders. Yeah, that ball. Looks like it. Yeah. Sanders right there. Sets him up for a little double play ball. Sharply hit him. Not sure if Sanders is going to make that play if it doesn't get some of Parker. We may never know, but it, boy, it kicked back there. And Sanders did a really nice job making an off-balance throw. Convert that double play. Pretty good reaction after that ball ricochets off the mound. The Red Raiders turn their sixth double play of the year. As Sanders quick to that ball. At this time in night, Gus, with the temperature, we don't need guys fouling the ball off their foot. <laughs> no. Or, no. And yeah. home plate umpire giving them time to feel better. Yeah, I think, I think we're all in agreement on that. <laughs> no hitter wants it, that's for sure. No, they don't. <laughs> Not at this point. I'd ask Longhorns head coach David Pierce earlier today if he had brought long sleeves to Lubbock. He said, well, yeah, but he had forgotten his puffy coat. I wore mine to the game, and I, I'm still chilly. <laughs> yeah. It's just that kind of night. Yes, it is. <laughs> Chris Koski, the home plate umpire, wears that off the shin guard. and <laughs> see him like, ah, come on, man. Porter Brown's got a couple of hits tonight. One of them a tape measure home run. He's walked a couple of times. Well, that might have generously been called a strike. But it's three and two. Swing and a miss. Parker Brown strikes out as Hudson Parker sits him down to end the eight. Harrelson to lead off. Will Burns will be on deck and then back to the top of the order. And it'll be Landon Stripling now at first base batting for Gavin Cash. Harrelson tonight has walked a couple of times and flied out to left field. Tim Tadlock is the Red Raiders head coach in his 12th year. Against Texas in the regular season comes in tonight 15 and 15. Has dropped a couple of postseason tournament games to the Longhorns. Five of his 15 wins here in Lubbock, 10 wins in Austin. Swing and a miss by Harrelson. As Whitehead has now struck out the last two batters he has seen. Struck out Davis Rivers to end the seventh, and now Harrelson leading off in the eighth.
A quick scan of the media guide. It looks like this 18 runs the most ever scored by the Longhorns in a game against the Red Raiders. Will Burns sees one pitch and sends it out of the ballpark. Red Raiders third home run of the night as Will Burns jumps on that white head pitch and sends it out into the Red Raider bullpen in right field. That is the first long ball of his Red Raider career. And the sophomore out of Mission Viejo, California, got all of that one. Does a nice job of staying on a fastball. Down and away, driving it out there to right field. It was tripling plate an inning defensively, but maybe, maybe he wasn't announced. <laughs> Snuck into the ball game. <laughs> Red Raiders have only five hits in the ball game tonight. Three of them are home runs. Austin Green has hit one out. Damian Bravo has a home run, and now Will Burns. Red Raiders have a double from Cade McGee. But the hits have been hard to come by tonight. Bame a pinch hit single as well. This ball hit pretty well by Stripling the other way, but plenty of room for Porter Brown. And there are two out here in the eighth inning. Yeah, it looks like the 18 run scored by the Longhorns the most ever in this series. They won a 16 to 15 game back in 85. They lost a 26 to 17 ball game in 95. 26 to 17. Yeah, that was the Clint Bryant show. I believe he had four hits and six RBIs in that game. Deion Rucker, four hits and seven RBIs in that game. I guess the wind was blowing out. Clint Bryant hit 44 home runs as a Red Raider, did he? Yes, he did. His number is retired up here across the facing of this press box. A lot of hits, a lot of home runs, a lot of doubles for Clint Bryant. Yeah, he was an outstanding player here in the mid-90s. Really on first Tech's first ever really great teams, conference champs, first ever postseason appearance. He was the best player on those teams. Austin Green batting right-handed has ended the inning by fouling out to Thomas over at first base. The Red Raiders get a run on the home run. He's also singled and walked a couple of times. Sees the first pitch from Erdman and hits a towering pop-up over behind first base, and Stripling drops the ball. Had it in the glove, rolls out. Error on the young Red Raider first baseman. And the Longhorns have a runner on base here at the top of the ninth. Yeah, he's drifting back. A couple steps to his right. Looks like he's in pretty good position, but that thing just dumps off the heel of his glove. Not supposed to happen with that great big glove. Second error of the night by the Red Raiders. Now Max Ballou. Ballou got Texas started with a three-run homer in the first inning. It was 4 nothing Longhorns. Red Raiders tied the game in the third, but have never led, and the Longhorns have added 14 more runs after that four all tie. Red Raiders additional runs have come on a home run from Austin Green and a home run from Will Burns. No. 
The Longhorns with 18 tonight. We believe the most they have ever scored in this series. Two and two now to the Texas right fielder. Long, Longhorns have not swept a series in Lubbock since 1992. 1992 was the year that uh, Southwest Conference coaches did a double round robin, John, and played 42 conference games. Three games, they went through the full series, yeah. full season, and then flipped it and Everyone played six comps, six games, two, three at your place and three at mine. Yeah. A lot of baseball. They only did that once. Yeah, I, I, that was. That was in the post. <laughs> Short-lived experiment. Yeah, Arkansas had just left the conference, and that was. Try that. The fact that they didn't do it <laughs> after 1992 <laughs> tells me they, maybe they didn't like it. Looks like they're going to get a new communication system out there to the mound for Erdman. He's having trouble with that earpiece. Little speaker system. Two runners on for Texas here in the top of the ninth. The Galvan at second reached on the air when Stripling dropped that pop up, and now Baloo's single to left brings Schusler to the plate. Flied out to right in the first, walked and scored in the fourth, doubled in a couple of runs in that fourth inning, too, as Texas batted around. He flied out to right again in the fifth and lined out to center in the seventh. It's his sixth time to bat in the game tonight. Schusler missed all of last season with an injury. One of a couple of Longhorns who played on that Prune Packers team out in California with Damian Bravo over the summer. Gus, I was going to quiz you on a couple of names. <laughs> <laughs> well, and why not at no. this point of the game? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Let me just check something out here for you. All right. You jumped right on that 1992 season. <laughs> so so you got the Heldsburg Prune Packers in the Empire League, West Coast Empire League, Pacific Empire League, they call it. There's ball four to Schusler. The bases are loaded for Texas here in the top of the ninth. Let's see. The other teams in that league are out of Humboldt, California, Lincoln, California, Medford, Solano, and another team called the West Coast. You got any of the mascots for any of those teams? Well, I do not. Maybe... Yeah, I, I'm. Maybe if I hear him. <laughs> Here's Jack O'Dowd. Well, we've got uh, a team that goes by the Crabs. Humboldt, Lincoln, Medford, Solano, or West Coast. Who are the Crabs? Oh, I like the Crabs. All right, Humboldt Crabs. Yeah, I like that. They are the Lincoln Potters, okay. Medford Rogues, Solano Mudcats, That's and good. the West Coast Kings. That's the Pacific Empire League. Swing and a miss by O'Dowd. Strikes out. 
Erdman's first strikeout of the night. And there's one away. Yeah, breaking ball. Down and out of the zone. Now chases it for the first out of the inning here. Will Gasparino, the next hitter, he is four for five. Two doubles, scored three times. He has been fantastic. Yeah, this guy's been tough on the Red Raiders. Has scored three of the four times he's been on base, and he just ripped that one to left field. That is out of here. That is the second grand slam of the night by Longhorn batters. Gasparino's got a four for five. Let's see. That is a five for six night with two doubles, two singles, and a grand slam. Holy cow. Have a day, kid. Man. Jumping on one and smoking that thing out of here. Really, the only question for that was, was it going to be elevated enough to get it over the wall? It was Clearly smoked and gonna go for extra bases. He got it just over the wall, but that was a linea. That breeze out of the north didn't hold that one up. Yeah, that breeze out of the north is only gonna hold up something if it's sort of the big lazy fly ball out to that part of the park. Casparino drove that ball. Yeah, nothing lazy here. about that hit. No, sir. Now back to the top of the order for Texas and Jared Thomas. That error by Stripling allowed that inning to continue and on the first batter of the inning. And yeah, at this point. Grand slam there. Woo. At this point, four runs in, three of them earned. That's a new highest run total for Texas now in love in this series. Gasparino is five for six tonight with with four RBIs, two doubles, and a grand slam. 16 runs would tie the biggest margin for a Longhorn win in this series. Interestingly, that came in 2016, and it was when the Red Raiders were the Big 12 champs. They took a thumping here at the hands of the Longhorns that year. Lost two of three. To Texas here in this ballpark, but came back and won the Big 12. They got hot. If I remember correctly, that team went 10 and 2 down the stretch. Nine hits tonight for the Longhorns with runners in scoring position, and it's reflected in that score. Thomas batting tonight for the seventh time in the ball game. But it's been a rough one for the Longhorns first baseman. He has been on base only one time. He doubled and scored in the fifth inning. Drove in a run with that hit. But he struck out a couple of times. Grounded out twice. Flied out once. But here he is on base with the walk. Tenth walk of the game allowed by Red Raider pitching. <laughs> Longhorns, 15, Ten walks, 19 hits. A lot of base runners for the Longhorns. And now Peyton Powell. He has three hits tonight, all singles. Walked a couple of times and struck out. Swing and a miss there by Powell. Fooled on that pitch. 
Still just one out here in this top of the ninth. Texas will halt their four game losing streak and the Red Raiders streak of unbeaten games here at home will come to an end. There's a single by Powell. Thomas is headed towards third. The Longhorns who already have four runs in in this inning have runners at the corner. And here's Jalen Flores. Back with Longhorns number one, Jalen Flores. Flores tonight has a couple of singles. He struck out twice, grounded out, and then grounded into that double play that Sanders turned in the eighth inning when the ball glanced off the mound. Sanders grabbed it near second, stepped on the bag there, and threw Flores out at first. And Flores is the eighth batter of the inning. Horns batted around on the fourth and scored seven runs. Swing and a miss there. Attack middle infield. Pinched toward the middle. Double play depth. They would love a twin killing here to get out of this pickle. Kind of been that way the entire night. Flores somehow Fouled that ball off over near his own dugout. Which is on the third base side. That get into their dugout, Gus? Yeah, looks like it hit somebody. somebody. Doubled over. That would be Galvan if that's the number six got hit by that ball. Ouch. He's got one of the two grand slams tonight by Texas. Ball is popped up into shallow right field, nearly in no man's land. Nice catch by Sanders. Long run to get that for out number two. Yeah, you really need Sanders to take charge on that ball, especially with Stripling holding the base runner on it first. Stripling's got the better angle. You don't want that first baseman turn and run and playing that over his shoulder if you can avoid it. Now Stripling not going to hold the base runner over there at first. Powell. With two outs. Batters Porter Brown. He's got a home run tonight. To go with the single, a couple of walks and a strikeout. Sanders is playing in shallow right field. The Red Raiders just throwing a bunch of guys one inning down the stretch right here. Get some awesome work. Also doesn't use anyone up should the opportunity present itself later on the weekend. And these are the kind of innings that guys are either getting growth opportunities or opportunity to command a little more time on the mound. A lot of at-bats tonight for Texas. There is a pinch hitter on deck, John, and that 
little concerning because it was Galvin that got hit by that foul ball a moment ago in the dugout. Hopefully he's okay. Yeah, that's certainly the way it appeared from the view of the dugout we saw. It appeared he was limping around a little bit after that ball shot into their dugout. Galvan, a couple of hits tonight, one of them a grand slam, and he was the guy that opened up this inning and reached when Stripling at first base dropped that pop-up. But should this inning continue past Porter Brown, he will not bat, it appears. There are two outs, top of the ninth. And four runs have scored on the grand slam by Gasparino. Runner at first goes, ball poked into left field. Pretty long run for Damian Bravo, but he is there to end the inning. We are headed to the bottom of the ninth here in short in this series. Although, Gus, the Red Raiders actually scored more than 22 in a game against the Longhorns yeah. themselves. 1995, goodness gracious. It was a 16 to 15 game. 1985, that one in Austin. 16 to 12 game here in Lubbock a couple of years ago. That featured a grand slam. Garrett Bain for the Red Raiders. He singled in his only at bat back in the sixth inning. Well, Ace Whitehead giving his ball club exactly what they wanted. He stands to win this ball game in relief. At this point, he's gone three and two thirds of one run baseball. Came in back in the fifth inning. The only run he's allowed was that solo home run to Will Burns in the eighth inning, which seems like it came about two hours ago. <laughs> Man, it has taken a while to play this one. That ball is ripped into left field by Bame, his second hit of the night. Well, leadoff batter on for the Red Raiders here in the bottom of the ninth. The Red Raiders had a little bit of traffic back in the sixth when Bame singled to right, but they ran into an out as Austin Green yeah. took a big turn. He thought the base runner heading around third was going to go. Got the stop sign from Coach Thomas and ran into an out. Well, Owen Washburn gets his first hit of the night, rips it down the right field line. Bame is headed for third. Washburn's on, so the first two batters here in the bottom of the ninth have reached for the Red Raiders. A moment ago, that hit by Bame. He came into the ball game, limited number of at-bats this season, and had just two hits, but he's had two hits in this game. Now Washburn is on, and Damian Bravo to the plate for the Red Raiders. Came into the ball game tonight as the nation's leading hitter. He is one for two in the game with a home run and a fly out to deep right field. He's walked in two other trips. Washburn gets the line drive base hit right there, but not the first line drive of the night as he has smoked two other balls right at guys for outs. He was happy to see that ball tick off the end of Thomas's glove so he could get a result. <laughs> and he swung it pretty well tonight. Won't have much to show for it. Boy, big swing and a miss by Bravo there as Whitehead came right after him and struck him out on three pitches. Yeah, elevated that two strike pitch. He chased it for the first down of the inning here. This will be Travis Sanders. Sanders grounded out at third in his only at-bat tonight. Came back in the seventh inning. Oh, yeah. 
Rolls that one down the third base line. I think they'll just let it roll foul, and they do. Powell backed away from it. Very similar looking swing as the one that uh, he grounded out with in the seventh. A little off speed pitch from Whitehead to Travis Sanders rolled up the third baseline. Powell made a really nice throw after charging the slow roller and throwing on the run. And it looked like we were going to get a similar looking result there. But that one rolls foul, and Powell was wise to let it roll foul. Two and two to Sanders, who's in there playing second base now. Has seven career hits. He's a freshman out of Copper's Cove, red-shirted freshman. Five of those hits are doubles. He struck out there. Back-to-back -back strikeouts now by Whitehead here in the bottom of the ninth after the first two batters reach base. Davis Rivers is the last hope for the Red Raiders. He's batted once back in the seventh inning against Whitehead and struck out. <laughs> Texas will end a four-game losing streak, win their eighth game of the year, and go 1-0 and in Big 12 play. The Red Raiders had won seven in a row. They will fall to 10 and 3 and 0 and 1 in Big 12 play, but still two more in this series to be played on Saturday and then again on Sunday. Right back at it at 2 o'clock on both days. Yep. Longhorns had 20 hits tonight, but two of them grand slam home runs by Galvan and Gasparino, the G-Boys tonight. Uh, <laughs> roughing up the Red Raiders, but still plenty of other offense with 20 hits by Texas tonight. And now two and two with two outs and two on in the bottom of the ninth. Can Davis Rivers extend this game another batter? Red Raiders' Gage Harrelson would be next if that opportunity comes. That ball is lined into left center field. I think he'll get down. Gasparino can't get to it. It gets to the wall. Rivers is going to have a double. The Red Raiders are going to score a couple of runs as Bame and Washburn score. So the Red Raiders have scored a couple of runs here in the bottom of the ninth. Two out double well hit by Rivers. It's 22 to 8. Yeah, driven that ball, drives that ball out to deep left center field. Gasparino tried to cut it off, unable to get there. Gage Harrelson does not have a hit tonight. 0 for 2 with the strikeout and the flyout. Did walk a couple of times. So he's been on base twice. Quickly finds himself in an 0-2 hole as Whitehead goes right after him. That's strike three looking. Just went right after the Red Raiders' Gage Harrelson to end this ballgame. Whitehead strikes out three in the ninth inning after giving up that double.